Hello everybody, uh, hello, my name is Frank A, I am an alcoholic, and uh, today we're here, uh, uh, to celebrate JR's, uh, we're here, uh, we're here to do I, 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 find that hard to find the word uh, knowing JR to uh, how I did. Uh, but we're all here for you. So uh, I'm going to open up with the uh, preamble. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for AA membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting for our own contribution. AA is not allied with any sex, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorse nor oppose any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober to help others receive sobriety. For those who care to please join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. And we have asked uh, Joanna to read the 12 steps. Hello, you guys. My name is Joanna, and I am an alcoholic. Guy. Joanna. Okay, but I don't have nothing. Okay. No, okay. Okay, number one, we admitted we are powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unnatural. Number two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Number three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Number four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Number five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our own. Number six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Number seven, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Number eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Number nine, we made direct commands to such people wherever possible, except to do so would injure them or others. Number ten, continue to take personal inventory and when we are wrong, promptly admit it. Number eleven, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And number 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to our God and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. And uh, we have asked uh, Gretchen to do the 12 traditions. Hey, Gretchen. <laughs> Uh, 12 traditions of AA. Number one, our common welfare should come first. Personal recovery depends upon AA unity. Number two, for our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority, a loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience. Our leaders are but trusted servants and do not govern. Number three, the only requirement for AA membership is a desire to stop drinking. Number four, each group should be autonomous except in matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole. Five, each group has but one primary purpose, to carry its message to the alcoholic that still suffers. Number six, every AA group ought never endorse, finance, or lend the AA name to any facility or outside enterprise, less problems of money, property, and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. Number seven, every AA group ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. 
Number eight, Alcoholics Anonymous should remain forever non-professional, but our service centers may employ special workers. <coughs> Number nine, AA as such ought never be organized, but we may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. 10, Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues, hence the AA name ought never be drawn into public controversy. 11, our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. And number 12, anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions, ever reminding us to place principles before personalities. All right, thank you very much. Okay, I have one question. We ask uh, Maggie uh, to do the chips for us. Thank you so much. I'm going to say, somebody please return. No. <laughs> 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 and I'm 
Okay. <laughs> I want to thank the Hope and her Hope uh, conspirators for uh, setting this up for us. And I am so overwhelmed with all the love. I thought I loved my husband, but I can see that he was loved by a lot of people. Oh, yeah. It was, it was this this is, uh, by the way, this is JR's wife, and, and uh, it's just that old timer always kicks in on me, so I'm bad on names and I apologize. And as soon as we uh, get back and we convene, uh, if you would uh, step up here and you, I think there was a phone that was going to be there. Yes, sir. Okay, everybody, so the food is, uh, is out there, and we'll take this 10-minute break for now. All right. Everybody, we want to thank Ashley and Michael for bringing the food. Okay, uh, uh, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And, uh... And now we will uh, resume the meeting. And again, my name is Frank A. And I am an alcoholic. And I'd like to thank everybody for being here. And we're going to, uh, JR's wife. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. This makes my heart fill with so much joy that he was so loved, only, not only by me, but by of others. I wrote a poem a week after he died because I didn't have, I, I kept all these words in my head and I didn't know what to do with them because uh, I, I didn't know what, how to say them because he was, he was so magnanim magnanimous that uh, I just, uh, I just decided to sit down and wrote, right. And this is one of the three and this is, like, sit down. This is, and that was Sophie, my service dog. You can tell how service she is. <laughs> <laughs> the name of uh, my poem is In Loving Memory. Everyone comes into the world with hope and prayer and love and then family. And to top it all off with the touch of an angel to help guide us. It's only those special few that hold their friends, and with the beating of a heart, they become family. It's a great life when you can lay your head down at night knowing that you are rich in family, not because of birth, but because of choice. We love you, JR, and we will always be watching out for you just in case God gets a little too busy. We are not angels, but we were blessed to be near one every day you smiled. We were there to hold you were there to hold our hands and fill our hearts with even more love than any one heart could possibly hold. We will think of you when the sun is shining and remember how warm it felt being in your smile. We will think of you when the music plays and our bodies dance to the rhythm that is known only as yours. We don't want to say goodbye to you. We don't want to let you go, and just realize that because of all the things you are, we will never have to. So rest in peace, my warrior of the heart, and stay strong in knowing that you will be the other man we are looking to when our eyes look up to the sky. You are in good company, honey, and your family is here to carry you with us each and every day. Each and every one of us, my love will always be yours.
Hi everybody, I'm John. Uh, I look a lot like my father, I've been told. <laughs> uh, kind of want to yeah. say the same thing that, that Muriel kind of touched on. It, it, it's amazing to see so many people to show up here. I, I've talked to a few of you and I didn't know my father all that well. You folks knew him a whole lot better than I did. Um, and if you have any stories to share, uh, I mentioned to a couple people, I would really love to know him better through you and your experiences. Um, I didn't know that he had such a support system. Uh, just very grateful that, that you all could come here today and, and remember him. If he's anything like me, and I don't think the apple fell that far, I know I, uh, that this would mean a lot to me. So I think it means a lot to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi, my name's Mark, and, uh, yeah, JR was a very special guy. We clicked immediately. And, and the thing about uh, JR, he, he was such a generous guy. And, you know, he not only did he help that little old lady that he used to hang around with, you know, he, he, oh, he adored her. And, uh, you know, we're all special people. There's only one of us, no matter what. And there was only one JR. And, uh, you know, we. <coughs> We, you know, yeah, we're, we have the alcoholism in common, and we were all teenage alcoholics, so we had that teenage, we still all had that teenager uh, mentality because that one part of us has never grown up and uh, in early in sobriety. Uh, it was kind of, uh, I knew how to teach them, and, and I go, hey, JR, he goes, yeah. And he goes, you gotta remember one thing, and he goes, What's that? I, I told him, because he was two years older than me. And I go, I'm a, I'm a little bit older than you. No, you're not! He so, <laughs> it, it was like, it was it was just funny to watch that childlike, uh, you know, like, like if we're back like little kids, you know. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he's going to be well missing it. And, and uh, yeah, it's uh, sad because I, I talked to him before he passed away and we told him today, man, W brother, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we never know what happens tomorrow, but you know, the great thing is, is that, is, uh, you know, he's, he's up there, he's up there with a the big meeting and, and uh, you know, one day I, I'll be up there too, you know, I have no plans on it right now, you know. Yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah. I
Jenny, you know, we all we're all raised like brothers and sisters. I've known these, these people since I was in diapers. It's like a family to me. So I appreciate you guys, I appreciate you guys coming out. So, but, um, my dad, you know, I he meant a lot of good. I've I've seen him through the bad times. I've seen him turn around. But he he, he tried to do good. And obviously, I, I realize now he touched a lot of people, and it's good to know that. It is good to know that. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, again, my name is Frank K. I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Frank. And uh, uh, knowing Jr. Uh, Jr. used to always tell me about uh, his, his boy. And, and the, the granddaughters and that. Uh, you know, uh, he did tremendous service to this program of alcoholics. You know, uh, when we were starting up the, uh, the TMP after it had gotten shut down, uh, he was there. He was there to open the doors, uh, make hobby, and uh, continue uh, doing what we're doing today, and, uh, doing that uh, non-drinking, more drugging, you know, just to be sober one day at a time. And uh, I'm going to miss this young man. Uh, I, I knew he had moved away, and uh, that's it, uh, the last I had talked of JR, but deep down inside the heart, you don't forget the people that you meet. Don't forget the people you meet that have had a form of impact in your life. But that's all we uh, ever discussed uh, was being sober. And as somebody else said, you know, his laughter, his, his joking around, uh, gonna be missed. Uh, yeah. uh, I know he'll be uh, in the big meeting in the sky. You know, it's with God now, and uh, we're here, and uh, we just continue doing uh, what we were doing, the non-drinking, non-drugging uh, that uh, has been let out for us, laid out for us. Uh, I'm just grateful to be here, and grateful to be able to, uh, uh, I've known JR, and that I uh, keep him inside my heart now. Keep all those uh, memories uh, alive in us. And, uh, and uh, thank, thank you for allowing me to share. And if there's anybody else that would like to step up and say a word. <laughs> but man, we had a lot of fun together. We uh, he helped me through this ride and ride. Uh, I'm very grateful for this program for what it has done in my life. I've done a 180 degrees. Uh, I managed to hold down a Teamster Union job for the past five and a half years with a mean little guy for a boss. That's a nice way of putting it. Before that, when I first got out of the rehab, uh, I got a real lousy sober living home up here on, we used to be up here on Arrow Highway with Brad. Some of you guys know here who know who Brad is? Brad and Jamie? Anyway, I got, uh, 
It was, it was, all he does is collect the money. You know, he make us all walk down here, and it's a long way down here from where that little living house was. But uh, right after that, I, I hooked up with Cecil over at the, uh, at the meeting place. Cecil, you know, and then Cecil became my sponsor, my roommate, and my co-driver, and he got me into the cross-country truck driving. Which is something I'm not used to. I'm used to construction trucking, staying here in Southern California. But I did get to see the whole country, and that was one of the things on my bucket list was to uh, see those leaves turn into their fall colors back east. I saw it for three seasons. That's enough. I'm back here in Southern California now, where I belong. Traffic sucks, but this is home. But anyway, on this one, I took JR with me on one trip to uh, New Jersey. Cross country and he comes up and hands me a $20 bill. He says, Here, this is for my food. I'm thinking, I'm not going to make it, buddy. But anyway, I, I pretty much treated him on that trip with cigarettes, and money, and uh, food. And I don't mind that. Uh, we, were, we went back to uh, Jersey City, New Jersey, and then when we got into the town of New Jersey, there was this. I mean, the state of New Jersey, there was this town we came across, it was called Mount Hope. And uh, Jared took a picture of the sign and he's going to post on it. I said, don't do that, you're going to get in trouble, dude. He posted it anyway, and Hope saw it, and her husband saw it, and he put down there that he liked it. <laughs> that made us laugh, 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 laugh. Another thing I, I'm a teaser. Another thing I did to him when we were going down the road, I said, you got to watch those spaghetti lines on that gear shifter. Their spaghetti lines are little small diameter airlines. I said, sometimes one of those will come off and it'll blast you. And at the same time I was doing this, I reached down and grabbed the little air blower I had in the truck to blow the dirt out of the truck. And I blasted him right in the face and he goes, ah, you effer! And he damn near jumped out the passenger window. <laughs> but, uh, we had a lot of fun together. And he would, he would call me also almost every day. And uh, like Alan said, uh, he, he, you know, he could be a pain in the butt, you know. But now, I, I, sometimes I wouldn't answer it on purpose because I just talked to him the day before too. And he always called me when I'm trying to go to sleep or I'm trying to do something important where I couldn't talk to him. Now I think about him all the time and I think, I'm going to get that old fart call. And, uh, it makes me sad because we had a lot of good times together. <coughs> he loved Muriel, he loved his sons, he loved all Muriel's pets, including that dog right there, Sophie. And he loved those cats of yours too. And I love animals too. And uh, what gives me comfort is knowing that he's up there now with uh, Cecil. Uh, oh, the other guy had all the. Years, uh, Dick Holmes. Dick Holmes. And uh, everybody else that was in the program that has gone on to the big meeting in the sky. And so I'm sure he's up there having a good time. I know that he wouldn't want us to be sad, he wants us to be happy. It's a hard thing to do when you miss somebody so much that you've known them so long. But rest in peace, brother. We're gonna all gonna miss you. And thank you very much for helping us see this program. Yes, we did. <laughs> You're hungry. I like that. My name is Joanna, and I'm an alcoholic. Joanna. Um, you know, I know Jr. As far as like how I've heard people talk. About first got clean um, two years and eight months ago. Um, I went to a meeting at the meeting place and him and Hope, by the way, Hope, thank you. Um, because you guys started that meeting, I was able to find somewhere to get sober. You know, and, and my life was crap, you know, and because of this program and because of people like JR and like Hope and everybody here, you know, um, I've been through also some loss, you know, my condolences to you. Um, I recently lost a daughter in a car accident, and because of this program, I'm still so. Oh my God. And you know, Vivian, I would always hear Vivian talk about Hope and JR, you know, and about how they started it, and it started out in one corner of the of the little block, and then it went to the next one, and then now it's in another one. 
But you know, um, that, that group became my home group. Even though I moved, I still consider it my home group because the people there, you know, people that knew JR, people like you guys, you know, just kept um, giving me hope and a reason to keep coming back, you know? So, you know, like I, I thank you because, and it's, it's funny because I was told, this is why I'm sober, it's because of people like this. You know, and, and that means a lot to me, you know. And now in turn, I get to also do that for someone else, you know. And, and that's a beautiful thing. So I just want to thank you and, you know, your family. I'm sorry that we didn't get to know your dad so well, but I didn't either. But I hear a lot of good things. That he was funny, that he was generous, you know, that he was just this goofy guy. And, and I, I wish I would have known him, you know, the way everybody else here did. But either way, I still thank you. And I thank you too, both. So thank you for letting me share. Thank you. Jared was my best friend. I talked to him four times a day. At least. At least. At least. You know, um, I get pissed off at him. He gets pissed off at me. He tell me I might die. He's a kid. He's going to revive me and kick my ass. Kill himself. You know. Um, he always said, I couldn't die on him. Here I am for you. Now, like I said, you must have a friend. I can call him at 10 o'clock at night, you know, with a problem, because I knew you up. The man needs to sleep for a week. You know? He slept all day. Yeah, I know he's up all day. He's up all night, he slept all day. You know? But according to him, he didn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I miss him every day. I'm not here to, to grieve him, I'm here to celebrate him. Because you know, without him, I probably wouldn't be sober today. You know, uh, every time I relapse, he got on my ass, you know, Chris, when are you going to get it? When are you going to start, you know, start? Okay. Huh. When are you gonna start getting it? That's when I learned to realize I didn't know shit. <laughs> you know, um, JR had his moments where he was miserable and he'd get on my case and I'd get on his case, you know, stop being such a prick and I hang up on him. <laughs> <laughs> Real good at that. That probably gave her our, our time afterwards, you know, but. <laughs> So I did to him. They he had such bitch fights, it wasn't even funny. I'm not well, kidding. They him acted and I like had our bitch fights, we were women. pretty damn funny. <laughs> they, they acted like two big girls. Yeah, we were worse than women most of the time. You know, but Jared's a good guy. You know, I know he's watching over me. He's watching over all of us. You know, and uh, he's a wonderful man. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hope. Oh. Hi, Hope. Hi, Hope. It's good to be back in the rooms of AA. It doesn't feel good to be back in the rooms of AA to lose a friend for now. I have um, goosebumps today. I keep getting them. I haven't had them in a long time. It's just so painful. But, you know, an indescribable thing that your body reacts to. Um, loss, reality, sets in. There's, there's a lot of people to think, but life changes and it's constantly changing every day, every week. Um, JR never changed for me. He always remained a solid person in my life, no matter whether the chips were down or the chips were up, and no matter whether I was changing, he was changing, he still remained a, a person in, in my life. We fought. Um, <laughs> He was real, a real person. 
I'm a real person, an imperfect person. He gave tremendous service work to AA as a whole. I don't know that anybody has given him, and I hope that we can today, enough thanks for the tremendous amount of service work he did and touched so many of his lives. And thank you so much for sharing that you're, you're sober today uh, because somebody was able to be there and open that door. I can't say that I'm an AA thumper anymore, but I am an AA person. I loved JR. I love him. I, I saw the changes in him. I saw the recent changes in him. A softer side. I, I, I mean, I was almost genuinely jealous of his acceptance of leaving. He shared that with me. Um, I could never be so brave. I could never be so brave. What a brave guy. He did not believe in bullying in an AA room. I know you want to hear stories about your dad. I can tell you that, man. He knew who the bullies were. He went to get help. He didn't want it to happen to him, and he didn't want it to happen to anybody else. Man, woman, anyone. Because when you come into AA, you got to keep coming back no matter what. No matter what it takes, and you can't be intimidated out of the room. And he did tremendous service work standing up against bullies. I love him, and thank you, the family, for allowing us to share this grief with you. to the hospital meetings, and there's JR, you know, always from across the room, I, I'd always have a seat to sit in, and um, he just welcomed everybody, so he was big time. He was at, you know, they say 90 meetings in 90 days for newcomers. He went to 120 meetings, <laughs> wasn't even a newcomer, but, you know, one time I saw him at Stater Brothers, and he was... Talk, he was all the way across the store, and um, this is Tracy, and I hadn't run into him for a while. He yells across the whole store, are you sober? I've been going to this store for a lot of years, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I'm sober. <laughs> it was so Thanks for funny. telling the world. Right. So, so the checker and I had a running joke until not that long ago. She finally stopped, but every time I would run through her line, she'd go, hi, are you sober? So I just, um, it was nice to be in touch with JR recently. And, um, to be able, I, it, it, I don't know why it came out, but I was able to tell him what a good friend he really was how much I loved him and I'm really blessed to have been able to do that and um, I'm just thank you all for everything thanks Son, because his son became one of my bestest friends. 
doing a help me enjoy coming to NNA. You know, I was one of those guys that didn't think. You know, I would have been good afterwards. And you know, Jr. was kind of a dick, but he was a loving dick. You know, <laughs> I mean. Somebody that cares about you enough to tell you what it is that it is. You know, not a, he wasn't always right. He was not always right. But when he was right, he meant to, you know, and even when he was wrong, he meant to love to help you out. He wasn't doing it to, to be a bully or to be painful or nothing like that. He would go out of his way to help you out. I mean, I got in trouble. I stayed at his house once, you know? Until something was figured out to figure out to fix my life and everything. So, you know, like I said, he introduced me to Alan, which is one of my closest friends. You know, but I think unfortunately I hadn't talked to him in a while. I think since he moved and stuff, but I've known what's going on with him and everything through his son and stuff because I've been really close friends with his son. Like I said. He's still doing his job. He got back into the rooms of NA or AA, you know? I mean, he's still doing the program even after he's dead. Uh, you know, um, maybe I'll start going to meetings again, I don't know. But I have done the program. I have so for 17 years, almost 17 years clean from alcohol. I was 20 years clean from meth. You know? And GR is one of the reasons. I would go through this and try to, you know, find which way I can do it. And he's one of those people that wouldn't let you do that. He would tell you what you're doing wrong. I put and you know point you out on it. Right? He's a good guy, and he is part of the reason that I am clean today. You know, you know, there's a bunch of people. There's a few of them that actually, you know, after my things went bad with NA, it still stuck up to me, you know, stood up for me, and kept in contact with me. And it's people like him that they really make this program work. For our and I came here and for JR, you know, I wasn't going to go back to a home for a while. I think that my life is real busy. I think that you know, JR meant a lot to me. I think mean, his family meant a lot to me. I am here.
Through those 17 years, JR has supported me, been a friend. We'd always call. We'd always text. If I didn't get a text, I got a message. If I didn't get Facebook, I got a tag, I got this. It was, <laughs> it was like I couldn't keep up. He would always call, messenger, whatever. And he, I just I couldn't keep up. But he was always... Yeah. He supported many people in the program. And now he's gone. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to have to tell you. Um, remember when he drew the limos? Up to the TMP with his limo. And then, oh, it's right there. That white one. We've all seen it a million times, haven't we? The picture it is. He would come around the TMP with all of his lemos and Denise, look what I get to do today. I'm like, whoop, whoop, yeah, you know, being happy, supportive with me. Well, then I think maybe five years later, I started driving lemos. <laughs> I know, and he's like, Denise, you gotta go to this lady. So he was always helpful, trying to get me, you know, because I was a single mom. And uh, in the restaurant business, it was highs and lows. You just never know. So he'd always try to say, hey, you go, go be a limo, do this. And he's very encouraging, always, always encouraging. I swear, I should have told him this, but he should have been a helpful Honda man. You know, because he was helpful with everybody, with everything. <laughs> right, last time I saw JR was when I met his wife, Muriel, two years ago. And they were lived in Needles. And uh, I met all the cats. And I took my son, too. Remember Muriel? My son. And they were so cute together, you guys. They were just, I know JR loved, loved Muriel. I was planning on coming to go see him right before he left for Utah. So the situation I'm in, I wasn't able to, so I have a lot of guilt for not seeing him. A lot of guilt. And now he's gone. And I just can't cope with this. And I'm having a tough time. So it's hard for me for crying like this. But um, I do know that I, I miss him. And I'm so sorry I didn't go up and see you guys if you were, when you were sick. And he was sick. But I had intended to. But it but happened that way. And that's okay. I got, uh, I guess that was uh, God's way of me saying goodbye to him when I saw him last. You know? I know he touched a lot of people's hearts in this room, so I'm gonna, I, there's a song that really, if you don't mind, can I play it for you guys? Because I've had, as, you know, being in the program, we've had a lot of, many, we go through many deaths. Well, I have. I've seen a lot of people die because they just can't get into these rooms. I've seen a lot of people die just because of health medical problems and this stupid COVID, you know? I've seen OD. I mean, it's just bad. So, JR was always supportive and always wanted us to stay in these rooms. He was just like Gretchen, or one of y'all said, Tracy, he was either here or he was at. Club or TMP. He was always there for everyone. And sometimes I'd even ignore his calls and texts because he got really annoyed at times. You know, I was like, dude, I'm busy. Well, since a common thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm surprised. You would think he didn't even have a wife with all the time he had on his hands to get a hold of all of us, you know? I just, I mean, now that I hear it, he's like, he did it with everybody. And that just tells you how special he is to all of us. And 
And you, I, I heard when he met you guys how happy and excited he was. I was right there with him. I never met you all. I might have met you, but I'm not sure. I've been here once before. Oh, okay. Into this, in this building. I've been in this yeah, building. I don't know if I was here was, when you met because he always let everybody know. It was about know. 12 years ago. Yeah, he let everybody know whenever, we, you know, he gets to see, well, that I know, I don't know. See the granddaughters, see the, you know, family. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a meeting, too. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just saying bye to somebody else. Oh. So can I just play that song and then yeah. I'll be done? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, I just want you to think of all the memories and the time that you guys had with JR, okay? Cheers to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you would hear, but you're not, because the drinks bring back all the memories of everything that we've been through. Toast to the ones that we got. Toast to the ones that we lost to the ones know everybody you know in the program we call each other family mm -hmm. right so when I was working at Norms I would get people from all over I remember uh, Victor and Violet would come into Norms oh we're her family <laughs> and you know, everybody would say well we're her family we want to sit in her section and JR would come in and he'd say I know everyone says they're her family but I am her family she's <laughs> really <laughs> my family uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> My daughter was married to JR's second cousin. And uh, so, yeah, and, and every time he'd, he'd see me, he'd give me a hug. We're family. Yeah, yeah JR, we're family. But, um, you know, we do these readings every day in meetings if we go to meetings every day. And uh, it's in how it works. And I for, forget the, the lead up, but it's, you know, we are not saints. And JR would always go, what's the point? The point is we're willing to grow along spiritual lines. But I just, every day I'm reading that, I can hear JR jumping out there. 
What's the point? And so, chicken. I don't know. He was really cool and he had ups and downs. I remember when he was staying in his van and he'd be behind the, the meeting place and the family broke it down or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, the dude never gave up. He never gave up. You know. Good job. Yeah. And his last drink up in Washington. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, rest in peace, JR. You know, uh, I know uh, you guys are going to get away now when we first were coming around in that state. He was, he was just really excited talking about his family and his grandkids all the time. So I'm really glad you all are here. And uh, we'll see you, JR. Thank you. Well, I guess I'm going to double dip then. <laughs> 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 they always care about it. Don't be double dipping. But uh, yes, you know, it's, a, it's such a small world. Uh, I, I uh, was living out, out here in Ontario on, on Belmont. And I, I remember when I met JR at the meeting place, uh, it turns out JR lived right down the street from me, but we never knew each other. I, me, I was caught up in my disease. Me, I was, uh, you know, always drinking and drugging and never had time for anything else other than that. Other than uh, once I uh, got into this program of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, life turned around and start meeting all these new people in, in life today. Just the same as I'm meeting people inside this room today. You know, I wake up, I say, I don't feel like drinking, don't feel like drugging, I do my little readings, and I do a meeting a day. Do a meeting a day. And that's uh, uh, how I would do it with JR when JR was out there at the TMP. Uh, it's funny that somebody mentioned this van out there, you know, he would have to, the meeting place supplies inside there and all. So, <laughs> you know, so uh, it was always, uh, it was always exciting, always exciting, always, uh, always learning to do the right thing or just doing the right thing for the day, you know. Uh, so I'm going to say thank you, and if there's anybody else I would like to uh, share. All right. Okay, well, then I'm going to ask Tracy uh, to read and pray us out of here.